Hi, everyone. Welcome, my Monday Night Warriors. There seem to be a few new faces this evening, which is exciting. And I just saw a friendly name pop into the room, someone who's a survivor of our eight-week job search boot camp at Fort Washington. So good to see that face. If anybody wants to show me their pearly whites, I'd be happy to see your faces today as we're going through. Since you get to look at mine, I'd love to see yours. Um, so this evening, we're going to be talking about Instagram for the job search. If you're not particularly interested in the job search, thank you, Linda. That was a great smile. Um, if you're not particularly interested in the job search, that's okay. We're still going to go over basics of Instagram as it is. So this isn't going to be a long drawn out slide presentation. It's going to be a little bit of a hybrid of kind of talking about what we can do with Instagram, as well as showing you what you can do. Um, by show of hands in the chat or whatever, um, can everybody tell me how many people already have an Instagram? Hi, Noelle. You can also unmute yourselves and talk. I know it might be a little choppy, but I'm happy to hear your voices. And if you have a question, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, we have uh, Instagram. We have, both have it. I do. I'm on Instagram. I don't. I don't either. Great. That's okay. You can complain. Tyreek, do you have Instagram? Some people do, some people don't. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so how many people have a personal Instagram and one that is more used for professional? Does anybody have separate ones? They post family and friends things on one and then business and work-related things on another? No, we, we oh, mingle. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Okay, so we'll be talking about all the facets of Instagram and why when you are job searching, it's important to kind of keep those things separate. So I'm going to start the presentation um, and feel free to meet yourself and speak out loud. It's a little hard for me to toggle between the um, chat box and the presentation at the same time. So if you have a question, let me know. Okay, so Instagram for the job search. Make sure everyone can see the screen. Um, we're going to go over the top 10 Instagram stats for 2020. Why Instagram? Well, Instagram has 1 billion people using it every single month. Imagine that. A billion people are on this one social media site that's dedicated to pictures. Now, 500 million people use Instagram stories every day. Well, what's a story? Anybody want to tell me what a story is on Instagram? Nobody? Okay. Well, I'll tell you. A story on Instagram is a series of images that tell a story about what it is that you want to talk about without using a lot of words. So it is a visual way to convey a message. Now, the gender mix on Instagram is actually pretty even. It's 52% female and 48% male, with 63% of Instagram users logging in at least once per day. Now, I will be honest, I am not as a religious Instagram user as maybe the average person, but I do check it out often, usually when my husband tags me in some photo. So um, I keep that separate from my uh, business Instagram that I would use and certainly different than our ECNY Instagram that we'll be taking a peek at in a little bit when we're looking at the types of articles that you might post. Now, Instagram users will spend an average of 28 minutes per day on the platform this year. I would think this statistic, I believe, was done before before we went completely into quarantine in most places. I will tell you what tagging means just a second. Um, so 
this number actually has risen. I believe the most recent average that I saw was um, 57 minutes, almost double what it, or more than double what it would have been if we were not all quarantined to our homes for a good portion of this year. So um, to get to the question that was submitted, what does tagging mean? Tagging is when you say that you with someone in a post. And we're gonna practice doing that a little later, but it's basically when you write something under a picture as a caption with the at sign and the person's name that they use on Instagram to tell them something or to direct a message at them. So when I go out and do something with my husband, he will all um, often tag me in a photo saying that we were together at this place with picture or um, enjoying an experience together. So you can do that whether it is a personal thing that you would do with a uh, family, friend, loved one, whomever, or you can do it in a business and you can tag another business that you're interested in connecting with or a person in business that you want to connect with. I apologize. For I'm trying to get... Then we move over here to the statistic. Instagram's potential advertising reach is 849.3 million users. That's a lot of users. So that means that businesses are going to be pretty active on Instagram. And one third of the most viewed stories are from businesses. So a good way to get in front of businesses that you're interested in working with or in is to be active on Instagram because they want your business, but you want a job potentially from them. So if you're engaging and you're adding something to their post, they might look at you a little bit differently, uh, you know, as someone standing out in the candidate pool. We moved down here. 75.3% um, of US businesses will use Instagram this year. Then a lot of businesses. Think about all those local mom and pop shops that want to bring people in, the large businesses that want to continue to support the community, especially during the type of year that we've had. They want us to feel connected to them, even if we can't physically go to their place. Of they want us to know that they're there for us, um, and doing that through social media would be a great way to do it. And then brands post an average of two and a half stories per week. And as we said before, stories are a visual description of a message that you want someone to understand. So when, hello. Um, when brands are trying to post something, they wanna get their messaging across um, that's very consistent with what it is that they do and the type of clientele they want to bring in. This little infographic, uh, came from Instagram itself, talking about their story, as well as Suite, which is a great platform if you need help posting social media things. Um, there, you know, I have the little sources down there for you. Um, but there are some great sites that tell you about statistics for social media. And I thought this one was particularly relevant for tonight's class. Does anybody have any questions about why Instagram would be a good place to either or advertise a business, try to find a job, or connect with other people? No? Okay. So move on. So Instagram for the job search, um, the, the first thing that we'll want to do is create a professional Instagram account. So while you might have a personal one, like I have, have somewhere logged in over here. Um, I'm going to log into my personal so you can see what that is like, which doesn't get a ton of traction because I don't post a lot. You'll see almost everything is someone else posting about me. You can see these are personal posts. This is somebody I know who is a therapist. Um, signs you may be too controlling. That's a business related type of post for someone in psychology. We have somebody showing a video of a surgery. We have somebody working hard using power tools. 
So it's interesting to see what people are posting. Many of these are going to be personal. This is a baby shower. So on our regular Instagram, you can create an account and you can post things that are cute kid pictures, tips and tricks for your friends, um, a little funny thing from Long Island Ducks about the, the mascot, Quacker Jack. Um, businesses that sell food, or this is the Food and Wine uh, magazine. They're posting pictures. So you can see the difference between friendly posts, which are, is a personal account, and ones that are more professional. Like this is a professional food photo. So I follow a bunch of different types of people, and you'll see a variety on my page. We have clean recipes. I used to be a cooking teacher, so you'll probably see a decent amount of food things on any social media of mine. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the presentation. But that was just a glimpse of what, say, a personal account would be. A professional account would be more like our CNY Foundation one, which if it loads would be nice. Okay, so this one is following Stony Brook University and their life skills page. Um, a beauty company that helps with uh, clean and shiny and healthy hair. These people follow us and we follow them back. These are some former boot campers that have posted. Um, that's a networking partner that we have who teaches about content marketing. So you can see that there are very interesting posts, but this one doesn't have as many pictures of people's kids because this is a business page. And I'll show you some of the things that we've posted in here in a little bit. So whether or not you already have an Instagram account, you would consider creating a new account dedicated to professional use only. This can keep your personal life separate from your work life and think of it as like a link of your Instagram. So instead of using only your Facebook for business networking, you would have LinkedIn. So for Instagram, you would have two versions. You would have your personal one, and then you have your business one. Um, and then that's a way to make your professional account shine because potential employers wouldn't be looking at your personal photos and seeing things that might not be appropriate, uh, especially since other people can tag you you don't always know what other people are going to do. So on here, these are the screens for when you are creating an Instagram account. So if you wanted to try to create an Instagram account, you would just go either on your phone, you could download the app, and it's basically the same thing, or you can go to Instagram.com. And I have to, oops, sorry. I just have to log out so you can see what it looks like. Instagram page, you might have something signed up. So if you already have a personal account, you would just go to sign up. You can go to switch accounts, manage accounts, but you would go to sign up. And if you don't have one yet, you can log in with your Facebook. You can type in this information. So it'd be a mobile number, an email, a full name, a username, and a password. And then the next screen that will come up will ask you to add your birthday. Now, this won't be a part of your public profile, but they need to verify your age because of some of the disclosures that they have. Um, so you would just put that in, even if it's for a business account, or even if you want to make an account for your pet, you would still put in your real birthday because they need to know the person who is posting is of age. So once you put that in, you would go to next, and then it would come up with a verification screen. It will ask you to either um, get a code either texted to your cell phone or to the email address that you use to set it up. Because if you remember when we were on this page, it asked for a mobile number or an email. If you put in a cell phone number, it'll send you a six digit code to your cell phone. If you put in an email address, it'll send you an email with a six digit code that you'll have to put in. So I'm just gonna put in um, any number in here And we'll see what we're doing. I'm going to go to sign up. 
gonna ask me for my birthday, which it doesn't let me put in December for some reason, but I did troubleshoot it and it does let you uh, change it after the fact. So you just put in any month and then you can go back and then you hit your next. And then you can, you'll get your six digit code. I'm getting mine texted to me momentarily. And I'm gonna put it in. And if it doesn't come through, you can change the phone number if you accidentally put the wrong one in. Um, if you didn't get the code, you can request a new one. So now when I start my Instagram account, it's gonna have some suggestions for me. The first one that it wants me to do is to follow Instagram. And that's their official account. So whenever they have notices, uh, they'll be able to let me know what's going on just by posting it on my Instagram feed. Now, if anybody wants to do this along with me tonight, if you, have, if you don't have an Instagram account or we're gonna be creating some posts. So I, you know, if you wanna be hands-on, feel free to do. If you just want to watch, you could do that as well. So we'll talk about who we want to search for later, but I would suggest for first thing, you should follow Instagram. You can also follow me if you'd like. I'm just gonna check the chat box. Um, I so somebody um, texted, can you lie about your birthday or age? I, you can, as long as you're over 18, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. If you're under 18, you should probably make sure with your parents that they're okay with you having an Instagram. Um, I, I don't think it makes that big of a difference because they're not going to tell anybody. It's just for verification purposes. Um, and yes, the phone number will be kept private as well as the email. Um, when you put it in to enter, it's just so Instagram can communicate with you and send you the verification code to make sure that it really is you that is opening wow. the account. Was there another comment? No, no, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go back over here, but that is basically how you start opening your Instagram account. Um, so what would you do next? Well, you would fill out your profile. Now your Instagram can be used as a personal branding machine. Anybody want to tell me what you think a personal branding machine would be? Nobody? Oh, I have a chat box. Somebody said. Oh, somebody said, well, will your name be shared? If you choose not to make your name as part of your um, username or ID that you put in, like I put in my name because for a business account, you would want them to know what your name is or your business name is. Um, but if it's your regular name, you don't have to share your regular name. Um, and I'll show you the settings in a minute. For personal, you don't have to use your personal name. You can make it something as simple simple as I love lilies like it, it as long as it's not already taken um, you should be okay you don't have to put your actual personal name if you don't want to so since nobody wants to answer the question about a brand your personal branding machine well what you can do with an Instagram is you can show who you are through a bunch of different ways using visually stunning posts now, when you're looking for this um, for a, a business or job search purpose, you would want to have a consistent brand. So you want to have a brand identity, which is going to be your vision, your authenticity, your personality, your commitment to what it is that you do. Um, how do you d differentiate yourself from others in the same field? And what value can you bring? So you want that to be consistent uh, across all of your professional social media, and you want to um, make it clear on what your expertise is and what you can offer to um, potential employees. Thank you, Olga. Brand is what you do. It absolutely is. It's everything about you. It's your logo. It's the type of clients that you work with. It is um, 
the different tasks that you do and how you do that. Um, so I will show you when we go into the settings, how we keep things private. I, that just came up um, as a, a message in the chat. Um, but because you can be almost completely anonymous on Instagram, just by not um, including your name in your username, that's basically how you keep it private. But we'll go into the settings in a little bit. Or you can have a pro private account. For the purpose of job searching or business, you would start out by making sure your new account is public. And that allows anyone to see your profile, whether they're following you or not. You would want employers and industry peers to be able to easily see your profile. So if we go back here, we just started this account. We want to go here, we will close, click on our profile. So since we're looking at that right now, I literally just created this account with all of you here. I have zero posts, I have one follower, and I'm following one person, and that is just Instagram, I imagine. So the first things that you can do is you can find your Facebook friend and connect it. You can add your profile photo, and we're going to talk about that when it comes to um, who your, um, like what your headshot you should use. But if you want to edit, you can click on edit here and you can change your name. If you don't want people to be able to discover you, you can change that to something else. You can change it into, you know, just your initials or something else, your full name, your nickname or business name. Now, if you want to change this, you have to do it within 14 days or it's going to be permanent and you can just disable this account and make a new one. Um, so you can also choose your username at this point and you can put in your website, you can put in a bio. You wanna be concise here. I believe it only gives you 150 characters to tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do. So for instance, I could put in our ECNY website And then I can say, that's just my, my quick little bio. I could write more if I wanted to, but that's what I'm going to put just for the moment. And I can put in my email if this is for a business account or um, for the job search, then you could just put in your work-ish email. You can customize your gender, whichever you prefer, male, female, custom, or prefer not to say. And then here you can click include your account when recommending similar accounts people might want to follow. If you don't want other people to be able to find you as easily, you can uncheck that box. If you do want people to easily find you, then you can leave it there. And then when other people are looking for people similar to you, you will also pop up. So you can hit submit on there if you put in your information. And that was just your edit profile. Now, if you wanted to change your password, you could change. If you wanted to connect apps and websites, this will tell you which ones are active, expired, and removed. Um, this is like when you use them to log in. For instance, if you logged in with your Facebook password and username, um, that would be listed here as well. If you wanted to subscribe to the different um, things that they do, whether you get feedback emails, so you can tell Instagram what you think, if you want reminder emails for notifications you've missed, product emails about their tools that they have. They do have some premium tools. We're not going to really discuss that too much tonight because we are doing basics. Um, you can get news emails to learn about the new features that are coming out. And you can also get text messages to your phone if you'd like that. Anything that you don't want, you can unclick and move on. And then if you want push notifications. So this is if you have your um, app downloaded on your phone or your tablet you can get uh, notifications sent directly to your phone from Instagram. So if you don't want to know when people like things that you post, you can click to off. 
if you only want it from people that follow or that you follow because you want to know that they're engaging with you, you can do from people I follow. Or if you don't care and you want everyone, you'll get a notification anytime someone likes a photo. So the reason that you would do everyone for a job search is that you might not have that person or you might not be following someone. They might have seen something that you engaged with another account that they don't follow you and you don't follow them. If you don't have it from everyone, you won't get a notification saying that they liked something that you posted. But if you're trying to maintain a privacy, then you can write off or um, just disable that by clicking the likes off if you don't want to know what they did. I'm going to put from everyone for now. Comments wise, the same thing off from people I follow or from everyone. So if someone makes a comment on a post or a picture that you send um, out into Instagram, um, you'll get a, a little notification popping up on your cell phone telling you that something happened on Instagram. Um, comment like, so if you make a comment and someone likes it, you'll be able to either choose off or from people that you follow. Um, likes and comments on photos of you. So this could be from people that you follow or everyone or off. But basically, if... Like for me, my husband posts pictures of us together all the time and he tags me. If one of his friends that I am not connected with on Instagram likes it, when it says from everyone, I'll get a notification if they liked that picture and or they commented on it, even if I'm not friends with them on Instagram. You can also choose to um, get a notification when someone accepts your follow request. If you are using Instagram for the job search, you would want that because if you're requesting someone, you want to know when they contacted you. Um, I will explain what follow means in just a second. Um, you would want to know that they decided that they're wanting to connect with you. Um, so when we're talking about um, following, think about on Facebook when you have things on your feed and different things come up on a regular basis from different people. Sometimes they are people that you are friends with on your friends list and other times it's just a company or an ad that you see and then you hit like or follow. You can see what's on their feed without being friends with them. On Instagram, most people are considered just followers. Who are you following and who is following you? Just means can see what you're posting and you can see what they are posting on there. So when we go down to this setting, it says friends on Instagram. You can either do off or from everyone. And this is saying your Facebook friend is on Instagram as this person. So this means if you're connected through Facebook, um, you can have your friends like list kind of imported almost. To see if you want to follow them, it lets you know which of your Facebook friends uh, are on Instagram and what name they use on Instagram. You can also get reminders if you didn't see your notification or other um, notifications that you might have seen, but it, there was a time restraints to it. You can get a reminder for what it is. And then first posts and stories. So if someone just gets on Instagram for the first time, you can have it turned on so you can see the first time that they sent something or the first story that they posted. And again, a post could be a single picture with a, a short little caption, or it can be a story, which is a collection of photos that tell a story visually. And then we have IGTV counts. So if you think about um, like a YouTube video, a lot of people post tutorials or things that they're doing in their life, if they're going on a walk, maybe they're showing you scenery, maybe they're showing a video of their kids doing something. Um, this, something very similar is on Instagram. It's called IGTV, Instagram TV. So if you wanted to know how many people saw your video, you would click the from everyone button because it'll tell you how many views your video got. So when you label your video, when you post it, you would say, uh, my new video or, you know, um, riding a bike for the first time, whatever it is that you would be posting on there. Whenever somebody views it, you'll get um, a, a notification saying somebody viewed your video. 
and how many people have done it. Then you have support requests. Um, if you have uh, some issues and you were asking for help, it'll tell you um, via a push notification on your phone when the tech or the IT person has uh, responded to you or if there's been an update on the inquiry that you've put in. And then live videos. Um, live videos are when somebody is videoing something at the moment and it's posting it live as it's happening. So if you want to get notification when someone is physically in the process of videoing something, then you would click on that on button to get notifications on your phone or your tablet um, called a push notification to know when that's happening. And when you go to manage contacts, the people listed here are going to be contacts you've uploaded to Instagram. So if you don't want your sync contacts on there, you can delete them all. And then they will be re-uploaded the next time it gets synced with your contacts unless you go to your device settings and turn off the access to your contacts. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's in there. Now, for those of you who are worried about privacy, only you can see your contacts, but Instagram does use the information you've uploaded about them to make friend suggestions for you and others or to provide a better experience for everyone. So if you're connected to a marketing group, Instagram might say to somebody else that's looking to connect with other marketers, hey, you might like this person here based on the fact that you had them uploaded um, and you guys talk about marketing and that's what your interactions are. So I currently have zero sync contacts. If they did sync, I would delete them at this point because this is not a very vibrant account at the moment. Um, and then if we go to privacy and security, so we were just saying before in the presentation that if you're using this for the job search or for business purposes, you would want it to be a public account. So if that's the case, you don't want this checked off. But like our friend in the group was worried about keeping it personal and, um, and having privacy, then you would click off a private account. When your account is private, only people you approve can see your photos and videos on Instagram. Your existing followers won't be affected. So I'm going to change my privacy back to public because I'm okay with people seeing things, but if you didn't want to, you can certainly check off the private account feature. Now activity status. Um, this allow accounts you follow and anyone you message to see when you were last active on your Instagram apps. So whether that's if you're on your computer, on your cell phone, on your tablet, Anything, it'll tell people when you were last on. It can say you were on there 15 minutes ago, you were on there two days ago. If you're searching um, on a job search and you're trying to do it through Instagram, you wanna make sure that you are consistently and regularly on there so you can engage with people. So it's good for them to see that you've been consistently active. Now, if you're somebody who's very private, maybe you wanna take that off because you don't want people to know when you're on much like on Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn, they have that little green dot to tell people that you're active and you're around and able to accept their messages. Maybe you don't want people to see that. You can turn off the activity status if you prefer. But for the job search, again, I think that you should leave that as a feature so people can see that you are active and engaged. Now for story sharing, you can let people share your story as messages. So if you post something really impactful and interesting, somebody might want to share that to their network of people. That's a great way to get some exposure for something that is important to you. So if you click off allow sharing, then they'll be able to send that to other people to look at. Okay. If you don't want that shared, then you would uncheck that box. So for comments, we can click on here, edit comments settings. It says comment filtering, keyword filters, hide comments that contain any of the words or phrases you type above from your post. So if there's something that you don't want people to be able to comment on, say you don't want people to comment on your children, you could type in children and their names, and that way they can't comment on it if that is in the post. Um, or if you want to use default keywords, you can hide comments that contain commonly reported keywords from your post. So Say you don't want to have negative feedback on something, you can put in a certain word, and then if that's in your post, then they can't comment on that particular word. Like if 
say uh, you have a business and you're having a sale, but you don't want them to comment on the sale. If you put the word sale in it, in your actual post and in the um, keywords, then it won't allow people to comment when that is there. Okay. I'm just going to go back for a second. Um, photos of you. Now you can choose how you want your photos added to your profile. Um, that would be, so when someone tags you in a photo and adds a photo, so say you take a picture with your best friend or your spouse or a business partner. If they know who you are on Instagram, what your name is on Instagram, they can tag you in there and either you can have it automatically added to your account or you can make it so it's manual. So I'm gonna click on here so we know the difference. So for photo and video tags, you can see where they've been. It's either gonna be in the Instagram app, you would go to your profile by tapping on the little person in the bottom right, and then you would tap the little tag icon. It's a, it looks like a tag on uh, something that you would purchase with a person in it. And then from Instagram.com, you'll go to your profile by clicking and tapping on your profile picture, which is this one right here, if anybody can see that, okay? And you can choose to manually or automatically add these photos or videos, and you can also change who can tag you in your privacy settings. So if we want to know what that means, you can choose whether photos and videos are tagged in a pair on your profile automatically or manually. When you choose to add photos and videos manually, they will appear on your profile only after you give them the okay and approve them. By default, when someone tags a photo or video of you, it will automatically be added to your profile. So unless you select the manual option, it's going to automatically populate. So we were just in that setting. If you want to manually approve tags, you would turn that on. And you could do the same. It's just a, a quick little article to teach you how to do it. I think it's okay for people to automatically tag me. If for some reason you're doing something for the job search and somebody is being inappropriate, you can block them from tagging you as well. So now your account data, if we go to view account data, it'll tell you when you joined. It'll tell you, you know, your privacy changes, password changes. It will give you the actual times and dates. But because I just created this one today, it's not going to give me that. It'll tell me if this was attached to a different address, uh, email address in the past, if it was attached to other phone numbers in the, in the past, um, if you had former usernames, former full names attached, um, if you had other bios, like if you changed your bio because you decided to change it up, switch it to um, A and B test, different taglines, you can check what they are and it would tell you, you know, what the options were for you in the past. And then if you had other links in your bio. Um, it'll also tell you about the history of your connections, your account activities, how many times you logged in, logged out, search history. This is also important in case you accidentally forgot to log out of a computer that is a public computer. You'd be able to figure that out. And there is a way to log out of other devices all at once if you needed to. And then also your stories activity, how many polls did you participate in? So if you post a survey, that might be considered a poll. You can um, complete that, and then that would be in your history. Emoji sliders, those are the cute little faces, um, and you can choose which ones you like, um, and that's just basically what that is. I'll tell you which sliders you have um, used in the past. Um, if you've answered questions, music questions, countdowns, quizzes, it'll show you all the things that you've interacted with, and then your ads interests, you can see which ones that you have looked at in the past that they have populated into your Instagram. And we have um, your two-factor authentication. So if you want to make sure that when you sign into something, they're, they're making sure that it's actually you, then you can do a two-factor authentication, which is they can send a text message to your phone and then you have to put in a code or you can do an authentication app um, and they'll, they'll send you a code from your security app in your phone as opposed to a text message. 
Then we have data download. If you had things in your Instagram and it's important to you, I would say um, doing a data download periodically would be very helpful, especially if you are engaging with different people, businesses, prospective employers. You'd want to know what you're saying to them um, so you could request a download and they will send you a download of your activity. And then if you have questions about privacy and security, you can talk to their support and they'll help you out and you can choose which topics you are interested in. I'm just gonna go back to here and then go to login activity. We kind of saw that. You can see that I'm logged in. I'm from home in Quorum. Hello everyone, I'm active right now in this window. And I also logged in from the same place 24 minutes ago which is when I started, so you can see that. So if something happened and your Instagram is a little wonky, you can see where it was last logged in. Maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was. Um, you can click down, it'll show you kind of where you are. Please don't come to my house, although I probably would make you dinner. And then if you want emails from Instagram, you can security on um, the list of emails. Instagram has uh, sent you about security within the last 14 days. And you can use it to verify which emails are real and which are fake. So in case you get something, it seems a little fishy, you can come check here and see what they actually sent you. This is to prevent scamming and letting other people into your accounts. And it would say that they wanted me to confirm my email address. It was sent from no reply at mail.instagram.com and it was sent to that email address at that date at that time. Um, and then for other, if there were other types of things, whether it's um, ads or anything else, you would see those there. Okay, I see that there's a question on categories. It says, can I be in several categories of business? And how can I choose all the categories? So Instagram actually makes um, being diversified in your category choices pretty easily. Um, and we're going to talk about hashtags in a little bit. Um, but basically, the hashtag is the way that you can choose multiple categories. Um, you have the option to say hashtag marketing, hashtag food service industry, whatever it is. And that's kind of how you categorize yourself is by using a hashtag. Oh, okay. I hope that was helpful, Olga. Um, now, before I was going through everything, we were looking at Instagram and it was saying um, in the profile area about putting in a photo. So if I wanted to add a profile photo, if I'm doing this for the job search or I'm doing it for, um, for my business, I would want to put in a professional headshot. So for instance, I think I just put one in. That is a headshot of me. That's, you know, more of a professional pose. Um, and we can go back to the presentation and that would just, it's that easy to upload it. If you have it saved in your computer or in your phone, you just choose the one you want. I'll show you in my other account. My photo is not as professional. It's a picture of me and my dog. You can see that there are a couple things posted. This is my personal account, mostly pictures of my husband and my dogs and food. So I wouldn't necessarily want that as my photo for a business one. So that's why I chose more of a professional looking headshot. So we can talk about do's and don'ts of professional headshots. Um, for the purpose of Instagram or any social media, it's a uh, common practice for people to try to take pictures that have their hands crossed, standing up where you see more of their body, but that actually isn't a best practice. It's better to just kind of have a very neutral stance, looking straight forward so people can see your face. Um, and you can either smile or just have a very kind of like pleasant look on your face without frowning. Um, and you want to kind of smile with your eyes, I would say. So in your headshot, you just want to be nice and straight and tall and just be, you know, serious. And if you are somebody who is a very friendly, smiley person, you can smile, but I wouldn't overdo it. Sometimes headshots, people go a little overboard. 
Um, so if you already have a LinkedIn, it's a good idea to use the same one because you want to be consistent in your branding through all of your professional sites. If you have a Facebook business page, I would say the same thing, whether you're a consultant or you own a, a small business or even a large business, you want it to be the same uh, all across your social media. Um, you can also add in a website link. You saw me type in the website link when I was going through the profile and that can go right to your company website or you can send it to your LinkedIn page or your Twitter page, whatever that you're going to be active on in a way that's going to portray you in a good light. Um, in a business sense, or if you're personal, if you just have a personal page about different things, that's fine too. Um, somebody just said on my profile, I have my business logo. You think I should change it? Um, I don't think it's a bad idea to have your business logo, but if you have a headshot, um, especially for Instagram, it's a good idea for people to know who you are because if they're going to do business with you, they want to know what you look like. So a professional headshot is a good thing to have for an Instagram account because it is one that is very visual. If you prefer not to have your headshot, you can use your business logo, but I would say somewhere on your Instagram in the story, there should be a photo of you doing something that you do so people can identify that business, that logo with the person. Did that answer your question, Olga? Yes. Okay, fabulous. Um, in the bio section, you have 150 characters to sell yourself. Um, you want to try to do your best to give people a little teaser about what they want. For those of you who have done boot camp or have done elevator pitch classes with me from the Port Washington Library, this is a good place to kind of pick apart your elevator pitch and find the best 150 words to people who you are and tease them a little bit to get to know you. Was there a question? I heard a little feedback. No? Okay. If you don't have an elevator pitch or you're not really sure where to start, um, it might be great to start talking about yourself, um, your current job or skills that you have, uh, what sort of new job you're looking for, or a list of your professional passions. So I could go in and I could edit mine instead of saying career strategist and life skills um, educator. Maybe I would say something um, and just add a phrase with a passion to help others. Maybe I can say something about all the charities that I work with. Um, I think that contributes to your character. Whatever it is that you're professional about and you are passionate about, that's what people want to know on your Instagram. Are there any questions about filling out your profile or any of those security and privacy settings that you want me to go back and show again? I don't see very many or any faces at all in here. So please unmute yourself and let me know if you do have a question or type in the chat box. I'd like this to be interactive. But since I don't hear or see anything, I'm just going to move on to the next slide. So the next thing is, what do we post on Instagram? And I'm going to show you a program that we use that is a free program to help us create visually stunning posts in just a minute. But I just want to talk about what you would post on Instagram first. Um, so social media obviously can hurt your career if you don't use it properly. If you've created a separate professional Instagram account, you want to focus on those career-related photos. If you attended a conference related to your industry, hopefully you took some pictures of that. You can take a picture, post it, tag the conference using a hashtag. That's how you tag it. Um, or when we go to show how we propose on, you can click on the face or a certain point of it, and then you can tag the person that you want to. Um, on that and then you can write a professional caption so for instance in this photo right here it might be a little small on your screen this was from a velocity conference that someone attended so you could post this and say something to the effect of had a great time at velocity conference with the hashtag for the actual conference name or the at sign so you're tagging them um and really learned a lot about putting my business in motion. 
So you can be a little clever with your wording. You don't want it to be a book because you're limited in the characters that you can use when you're writing a caption, but you want it to be poignant. You want it to be a little witty uh, and you want people to be interested in what it is that you're posting and engage. Maybe someone would say, oh, what did you learn at the Velocity Conference? What was that about? Maybe they want to know more about your industry and how you do it. Um, perhaps you did, are a creative designer and you do web pages. If you designed a website for a freelance project, maybe you can screenshot it. So I screenshotted here a picture of our website. Not necessarily that I built this, but it's something that I use all the time for my students through ECNY. Um, and it would be a good way for them to kind of know, okay, so this is the page that I'm going to. So if I was posting in one of my classes for my students to be able to go to our resources page, maybe I would simply go to that website and then um, take a screenshot of that page so they could see exactly what it is in the post. Now, when you have separate accounts between a business and a personal, it could be tempting to post some personal photos. Like I love my dogs probably more than anything. And I would love for them to be in the Zoom call with us so you can see how adorable they are. But that's not exactly professional. So I, if I wouldn't want them on the Zoom with all of you because I don't want you to think less of me as a professional, then I don't want them also on my business account. So think about that before you post things and think about whether your boss would be really excited to see your pets, your children, something crazy that you're doing out in the world on that account. If it doesn't sit right, save them for your personal account or refrain from posting them all together. If it's anything that could be a little questionable about your professionalism, your moral character, maybe try to keep them off of social media altogether. And then another thing for posting on Instagram is to not forget about the Instagram stories and Instagram TV features. And we'll go look at those in a little bit. But basically, it's a way for you to tell in a series of photos or a video what you're doing and how you're engaging with the community and your potential clients. Um, you can create videos talking about the project you're working on, share a video from an employer that you follow, um, and then that can make sense for your account because you're trying to get traction in things that interest you and that can help you get ahead for whatever your uh, mission is for using Instagram. Whether that's just getting more followers, connecting with family and friends, or trying to get a new or better job. You can also uh, maintain a regular and consistent posting schedule and that will enhance your profile and help you with your personal brand. So we said before, it's all about your personal branding. You want to be consistent and you also want to do it regularly. Um, that way people can see that you are committed. Now I'm going to go to a website called canva.com. If you've never heard of Canva, I hope that the Canva 101 class is on YouTube because it's a great free resource that you can use to create digital marketing pieces. Anything from an Instagram poster story, a Facebook banner, you can create ads, you can make cards that you send to people. There are a million things that you can do using Canva. And I'm going to go there in a second. Um, and we, you can, uh, so somebody just asked, how do you create a video? So you would have to have a video created, something that you have either in your phone or professional video that you have of yourself, maybe teaching a Zoom class or giving a presentation. As long as you have it saved somewhere where you can upload it, we'll talk about how you post a video on Instagram a little bit later, um, but we'll get there. I'm going to take you right now to canva.com. And I happen to already be signed in on our account um, here. And you can see we have a bunch of different things. We have our designs. Um, and you can see that there are some categories here. We can create Instagram posts. So I'm going to click on that because both. as soon as that's up, I encourage you to look for Canva. Um, but we'll get a very quick tutorial of using Canva now. 
Um, so Canva has a free forever um, level of membership, and then there are also paid accounts. I suggest that you use the free one because there are tons of things that you can use. Um, and because we're talking about Instagram today, we're going to focus specifically on the Instagram features that they have. But you can see that they have Instagram posts, Facebook posts, flyers, logos, posters, Facebook covers, tons and tons of social media things. And we have Instagram stories. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the Instagram posts. So I'm going to click on here. And it'll show us templates. And if we created any designs, they would come up. We haven't used any Instagram post templates on this. I think we've used mostly the social media ones, but that's fine. But you can look at these templates and you can find one that you really like. Can somebody please either say aloud in the chat or type in the chat something that they would be interested in posting? <laughs> and I'll do a sample for myself and a sample for that person. I'm going to start with a blank one for now while I'm waiting for some comments. Okay, so um, we can do something with photography and something with um, permanent cosmetics, and I will um, do those in a second. For right now, I'm going to upload um, something that we're doing for our Fort Washington um, later on this week. I just downloaded an image today that I created. Not sure where it went. Oh, here we go. I'm just uploading it. All I did was I hit upload in your video. There's a little rainbow bar here, and now it is loaded. So all I have to do is click on it, and it's going to come into my post. So now I've put that there. This is a little ad to help people. Um, we were, we're doing a career opportunity panel discussion and we're really excited about it this week um, for our boot camp. This is something that we'll be doing in our future boot camp. So there are ones coming up and usually Denise will tell you about that um, later on at the end of class. If not, if she's not on, then I will happily talk about our next boot camp that's coming up. But this is um, a new feature of our boot camp now that we are completely online, but we're trying to have a career opportunity panel discussion. So I would post this potentially on Instagram to try to get some traction. So because it doesn't take up the entire box, I can put some text in here and add a heading and I can rotate this. I can add that text that was, oops. And then I can highlight the whole thing and I can click on here and go to more and make it larger. So another great thing about Canva is it helps you with your brand colors. So it will show you what the document colors are. You can also pick new colors. If you have branded colors, you can load them into Canva itself. I'm going to go with an orange color. To match what we have here.
So now I quickly created this in less than two minutes and it does have a registration link. So I have that link um, somewhere. I'm just gonna go pull my link up for a second. Sorry, I just have to remember where I get the link from, but you would need to do this if you um, had to anyway. So I'm just gonna sign in to my email and I'm gonna go and grab my link. Sorry for the delay. So this happens to be a form for a sign up for registration. I'm going into my form, I'm getting my share. I'm copying it, now I'm going back to my Canva which is here. And then where this little button is, I want to be able to put in a link. So I hit the little dots. I'm going to hit the little um, link button. And I'm going to paste that link in there and apply. So now when I save this, I actually I want to change this to that same green color in the background. I have this saved in another place. I apologize. It's a little um, tedious to find the exact color. Now I will go with gray because that's a little bit easier to see. And we'll change this to white. And then it doesn't matter about the exact color. So you can put in a color code. You can put in, just type in a color. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, now this already has the link in it. And if I wanted to animate this, I could. I could make it lock. I can make it fade in. I can make it tumble in. I can make it pan in. So I think I like the idea of tumbling in. I think that's kind of a fun thing. I'm now going to just download it. I'm going to download it as a video. You said, how do you make a video? I just made a cute little five second video with my flyer on there. Okay, we'll show you how to do that in a second. If I don't want to animate it, I can get back. Um, and do. If I want to make it quicker, if I want to make it longer, whatever it is, you can do that. You can see what it looks like. Close. I want to present it, if I want to share it, if I want to put it on Facebook, Twitter, I want to do other things. There are tons of different options that you could do. Right through Canva. I want to go 
back because I want to Okay, so it is not animated yet, so I'm going to make it as if it is a regular image. I'm going to save it as a PNG uh, because that is, uh, you know what, that is for most of the time high quality. So we want to go with high quality. Um, it's not, the link is not going to work. So we already have the link with us. So when we post it on Instagram, we'll have the ability to put the link in the um, caption as opposed to just clicking on the physical picture. But I can download that as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my Instagram. Go to ECNY Corp. And I'm going to create a post. problem loading my inbox. Okay, that's helpful. Okay. I see. Sorry, I'm just checking the chat for a second. Yes, if you don't finish, you can re-edit um, in Canva. Oops, it's this one. You just save it as whatever it is that you want it saved as. And then when you go back to your main Canva page, your, all your designs, it'll show here and you can re-edit it. If you want multiple versions of the same one, you can make copies or you can um, copy that page and then you have it you have multiple pages. So one you can save as a regular um, JPEG. The other one you can animate and make that like a video. The difference between PNG and JPEG is uh, PNG is a higher quality file, but not all programs accept a PNG. A JPEG is a slightly lower quality one, but it's still good. Normally, I would go with a PNG if possible when you're creating it, but oftentimes you'll get JPEG files when you're downloading photos from the internet. Hi. So somebody wanted to say, how do we share photos and videos? So if we are going to just, if we're posting, how do I, ooh, that was my chat box, sorry. How do I post a photo on Instagram? It's pretty easy. It's to upload a photo or take a new one. First, you're gonna tap the plus sign at the bottom of your screen. To upload a photo from your phone's library, you tap the library on your iOS or gallery on your Android at the bottom of your screen and select the photo that you'd like to share. If you want to take a new photo, you can tap photo at the bottom of the screen and then tap the little circle or tap the refresh to switch between front and back or front and rear facing cameras and the flash to adjust the flash. And once you've uploaded your photo or taken it, you oh, can back your filters, caption, add your location before posting. And you can also post a video. We'll go to right a second. I'm just checking the chat again. Um, can we change the file size? Um, well, the file size is saved based on your um, Canva template that you took. So you can't really change it here, um, but if you have an editing program like uh, Lunapix, you can change it. Going back to Instagram, sorry. Right, so I'm gonna go back to the Instagram that we had set up. Oops. Where's this one? So it's a little different the way that you look at it on um, my computer screen because it is a touch screen and I have my Zoom window open. It's a little hard for me to. Um, 
get to where you actually add it. And I'm not sure why I can't see it at the moment. I apologize. It's like somebody is having ice. This is like the main page for Instagram. When you first start up, you can see people's pictures. And I'm trying to figure out how on my computer I can add it because there is currently a problem with my Instagram loading on here. And I apologize for not being able to add I don't actually want to do that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. There, there is a problem right now with my Instagram where it is not allowing me to actually post anything new on Instagram through my computer which is probably the number one thing that you would like to see. So I'm going to try to figure out how I can get you to see that. So on the app part, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do, show you this camera wise. Can everybody see in the actual app that there is a little plus button right in the bottom? Oops. Can everybody see that there's a home, a magnifying glass, a little plus button, a heart, and then the profile? Yeah. If you click on the plus, it allows you to pull up from your gallery what you want to post on Instagram. So I'm not sure why it is not cooperating because you saw me create the account right alongside you. And somebody please tell me if you have your Instagram open and the post button is missing because it is missing online and I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anybody have their um, actual Instagram open on their computer that they can check to see how to make a post because my ability to post is not working. Nobody's having this issue. Let's go to home. sure why I can't do it. So the only thing I can do is try
try to figure out how I can show you how to do it when my computer is not cooperating. So if I can go in and download what I just put on there on my phone, maybe I'll be able to show you just through the camera how to do it through the app. I'm going to try to send it to myself. Yeah. I'm going to go to the direct message. So one of the things with Instagram is that you can send a direct message. Um, I will need to... Is my uh. um. just trying to see what I'm doing. Um. That is an account. I'm it's a real account. That was weird. Okay. I want to send a message to. Um, let me see if I can send it through here, send a direct message. Message to... It is actually not letting me do anything. I think I'm going to leave Instagram and come back in because I'm not sure why the features that are very easy to use are not working. So please pardon me for a moment. Keep scrolling down. I don't want to do this. Okay. So, because I don't want to waste more time, we are literally just going to go to help and try to figure out. Oh, help. Okay. I'm not sure what is going on, why I can't post anything. Sorry. I'm sorry. This is a little frustrating. I apologize. I've never had a problem posting to Instagram before. Oh, all right. 
right? So it's telling me I can no longer upload photos from a desktop computer. So I'm gonna sign in on this particular device and I will try to show you how to do it that way. Um, Porque está usando los dos. So, let's go to Canva. I'm going to upload in my phone from my Canva app that um, the template that we just created. It's a little hard because I can't share from my phone onto the screen. Um, apparently, um, Instagram took away the ability to post from a computer, so I'm going to try I to use the phone um, and have you see it that way. I just need to upload this in or download it into my phone. And then I'm going to show it through the little window for you. So let me minimize this. Um, Sorry, everyone. I think I figured it out at the moment, and we're going to go back into Instagram in general. I'm going to open up this window where you can see my camera, hopefully. Okay, so this is the Instagram uh, screen. If I go down to the bottom, I apologize, I can't reverse it just because of the way the camera is. At the very bottom, there's that little plus button. I'm gonna hit that plus button and I'm gonna take the image that I downloaded to my phone from Canva, just like I did on the computer screen. And it's gonna bring up a bunch of things, including the image that I just took. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna hit next, which is at the top corner. I hit next. And now it brought this up and it's asking me if I want to do a filter. And at this time, I don't. So I'm just gonna go to normal. And then I'm gonna hit at the top corner. Ah, okay, next. next. So you hit next and another screen is going to load. And on that screen, it says I can write a caption. So I'm gonna write a caption. Um, I'm just gonna write dot jobs and put a question mark at the end. We have candidates. exclamation mark, and I can add a location. So I'm gonna add the Port Washington Public Library in the location. PWPL. So now I have my little caption I didn't tag anybody right now, but I can. WPL. And then I put in Port Washington Public Library, and then I'm going to go hit at the top of the share button. It is now. Thank you for calling the Lori and now it's on my feet. real estate team. Your business is very important. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my Instagram to my home, everybody sees. Now I posted it on my feed. I had to do it through my phone, but it was able to do that. And we have this little 
um, flyer trying to help us get some people to help our boot camp students. So does anybody have any questions other than the fact that I couldn't do it on the laptop for you to see? Were you able to see how easy it was to just hit the plus button and then upload from your phone or a tablet? I see a comment. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to go back to uh, what I have on the presentation because we were able to create posts and we can work on more of them. Um, but the next most important thing um, in Instagram, because I see that we're starting to um, run out of time, and I apologize for that delay. There was a, a feature change. Um, so somebody wrote in the chat, must all the pics on my phone be accessible to Instagram? Generally speaking, unless you are able to put your photos in a secure folder where not, no apps can see them, I would say they're all accessible to Instagram because it just pulls up your gallery. Um, okay, so the graphic was in my phone already and I just went and I, at the very bottom of the Instagram app, there's a little house, there's a little magnifying glass, there's a plus sign, there's a heart, and then there's my profile picture. If I wanted to post something, I would simply hit that little plus button, and it brings me to my gallery. And I can scroll through my gallery, and you can see lots of pictures of kitchen remodeling and dogs, because in my personal life, that's what is going on at the moment. If I wanted to um, take a video right now, I could do that by clicking the video button which is a little hard to focus. If I wanted to take a photo or if I wanted to go to gallery, you can choose what you want. And the gallery is there. And you just scroll and then you choose what you want to post. And then you hit next to click through where it is uh, and what you want to be posted. Just checking the chat. Okay. Now, if we want to go on Instagram, especially for the job search, we'd want to be searching and using hashtags in order to get traction in the areas that are most important to us. So we're going to use the searchable hashtags to find other people who could be added to our network, companies, and even open jobs potentially. It's a great way to uncover companies and jobs you weren't aware of before. Um, some popular hashtags to consider for a job search include remote work, um, hashtag jobs, hashtag job search, or hashtag job search tips. Any of those would be interesting ones to check on. So if we go into Instagram, we can type in, and we can see in hashtag jobs, there are 4 million almost 500,000 posts about jobs. There's over a million job search, jobs hiring. Maybe these are all interesting ones that you wanna look up and you can follow these. So anytime somebody creates a post and puts in hashtag jobs hiring, you would get a notification telling you that somebody is hiring. You can see that there are interesting posts here. It um, will sort them by top posts, so those are the ones that um, most people have liked. There's most recent, and you can keep looking at all different things. So this is a good way to kind of jumpstart your job search if that is what you are working on at the moment. If you are just doing a personal account and you just like dogs, you can search hashtag dogs Dogs of Instagram has a whole lot of posts. Um, and you can see 
many people's pets and there are lots of them on Instagram. So it all depends on what it is that you're looking for. So if we go back to the presentation part, um, we can also focus on looking through the top hashtags for your spe uh, specific career field. For example, if you're a virtual assistant or marketer, you might want to look at the hashtags like virtual assistant, virtual assistant oh, jobs, virtual life, marketing, marketing manager, or marketing manager life. So we can go back to Instagram and we can look up that. We can do um, just hashtag marketing and see what comes up. So we can see marketing strategy, regular marketing. There are a lot of different posts that can talk about these areas. If you're specifically doing it for the job search, I'm not sure why those are the marketing um, pictures that are coming up, but the recent ones, they will show you all different things from various accounts all around the world, people that are using it um, for marketing their businesses or whatever it is that they do. So, hashtag marketing jobs, there's 26,000 posts in here. We can follow them, we can see the top posts. Um, you can see that there are companies in the marketing arena that are hiring. You can click on them and see if there's anything that makes sense for you. Um, Location-wise, maybe they're hiring you know, remote workers, whatever it is, you can try to find something that makes sense for you. You might see um, job fairs or anything like that on here as well. Um, you'll probably see some interesting um, reviews of different companies as well on Instagram, community manager, remote job opening. So it's interesting to see what you can use Instagram for in this respect. Um, and then if we go back here, you should also use industry keywords such as hashtags to describe pictures you've posted. For example, if you've attended an important marketing conference or workshop, you can upload a photo of the events with the hashtag marketing and hashtag the name of the conference or the hashtag the conference is already using. So I'm just gonna check the chat box because I see that somebody wrote in there. Um, how do you know it's the right hashtag? Sometimes you put in a hashtag and it shows recent, sometimes shows thousands, which one is the best? So you're determining the hashtag. Whatever your branding message is gonna be, whatever you want it um, to come up as, that is what you would brand it. You could put in 30 hashtags. So I'm gonna open our ECNY um, Instagram and show you some of the different hashtags that we've used in the past where um, our tagline for ECNY is um, workforce development is economic development. So when we look at our posts, you'll see that there are a bunch of hashtags for them. Um, when we post at the bottom, ECMY Strong, ECMY Job Search Bootcamp, Workforce Development is Economic Development. Those are just some of the ones that we've used. This was for our recent Microsoft Teams class. So we have ECMY Strong, PWPL, Career Math LI. That's an initiative to help people understand what you know potential career paths will be. Microsoft Teams, because that was the actual class. And Workforce Development is Economic Development. If you look something up and it's in the realm of what you want, you can choose the one when you're searching for uh, that has the most uh, posts there because that means people are looking there and they're using that hashtag frequently. So if the more hashtags that it, that that phrase has, the more likely that other people will see it if that answers your question. So the more is the better in this instance, Olga. Was that helpful? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so what is a, a hashtag that you might want to use? Mm. Okay, okay. Um, 
so I don't know. Did anybody else have a question about that? No? Okay, so I'm going to go back over here. And then, ooh, that's interesting. I guess I typed something weird into my um, Google slide, and I apologize. It was not in there before. I think I accidentally leaned on it before when I was trying to um, fix Instagram. Um, so another good thing that you can do, um, oh, okay. Um, before I get to companies, I'm gonna answer Olga's question. I do think that that would be a good hashtag. People um, would probably be looking for that if they're looking for permanent eyebrows. You can do um, hashtag permanent eyebrows, hashtag permanent makeup, hashtag, um, hashtag eyebrow tattoo, um, anything um, that talks about permanent cosmetics. I think you could use multiple hashtags um, to just try to get as much exposure as possible. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can put a bunch in, well, as long as it describes what you're actually doing. Oh. There's another question in here as well. I have a Teams question. I was trying to use Teams, and the person trying to connect was going to my voicemail and saying not available. I'm not sure why um, there's an issue with Teams. I do know um, that today in particular, um, both Teams and Zoom were down for a very large block of the day because of overuse with many schools and companies going back online um, completely. There just wasn't enough, I guess, server capacity for all the people. So um, Nick, I don't know when you were having issues with your Teams. Um, our expert, Rob Kratsky, is the one that can normally troubleshoot those. So if you would like to send an email to me, I can certainly forward it to him and see if he has experience. So I'm going to put my email address in the box. And if you want to forward me a specific question, uh, I'm happy to try to um, get an answer for you. But that is not my area of expertise, so I don't want to give you the wrong answer. But that is my email address, and you're welcome to send me questions if you'd like. Um, I'm going to go back to find and following companies. Um, so for the job search specifically, finding and following your dream employers and industry heroes is a great way to stay up to date on the latest trends for your field. So if you're thinking about what accounts you should follow, think about what employers and industries you're interested in. So um, for our boot camp students, the first homework assignment, they're asked to come up with 30 companies they'd like to work with. So if you are a boot camp survivor or you're currently in boot camp, maybe revisit that list. If you've never been in boot camp, we can help you get signed up for one. And if you really don't want a boot camp, but you still want to follow um, some interesting people, you could also make your own list of 30 companies that you'd like to work for. Wow. So if we go in here, we can search. So say we're really interested in, um, I think someone said photography. So um, we can look for, Photography here and say we go to that hashtag we're gonna oh. click on or we can do photography jobs because it's just gonna be people taking pictures of themselves. So if we look at a post like this that says now hiring Fancy Tiger Crafts, maybe that is a company that you'd be interested in because they're looking to hire a freelance uh, product photographer and photo editor for their online store. This person would have an eye for detail, can accurately capture color, et cetera. So if you were interested in this, you could just hit that follow button 
And then anytime that Fancy Tiger Crafts posts something, you would get a notification on that. If for instance, you are very interested in education, like in the sample here, you can look for and follow different companies. Like K-12 Learn is a company that does distance learning. Um, in the age of coronavirus, um, there might be a lot of uh, jobs in this field since parents might not be comfortable sending their kids to physical public schools. So K-12 Learn might be a good opportunity for people who are in the education field but have not had great luck getting into a public school district to look at what they can build up their portfolio doing. And you can follow right this page. You can also look at, we're not going to do this, but you could block a user, you could restrict a user, and you could report a user. Um, I don't think they've done anything to us, so we're not, if somebody does give you a problem, you could always do that as well. Um, once you follow someone, you'll see the little um, person icon with the check box or check mark next to it. And that means that you are following them. You can also at that point message them. So if you wanted to message them about something, you could do that right in this box. You could add a picture, um, anything that you would want to do. We're not going to message this person because I, we, we don't have a purpose for it. But we could certainly message some. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for myself. And then we will practice sending um, a message through a, direct, um, a DM, which is a direct message. So now that I've followed, I can now, through ECNY, I can message and I can even post that picture that we just did. And I can send that right through the direct message. Check out this event. Here's your, I can type. And then I can send that, and I'll try to show you how that comes through on my phone. to find my application. Um, I did not get a notification on my phone yet that it is there, so but I can look in my Okay, so if I'm on my homepage here and I want to check to see if there are any direct messages, I'm going to take this little um, paper airplane send arrow, and it's a little hard to see, I'm sorry, and I'm going to click on that and it's going to take me to a page that shows me my messages. Okay, it says that I have a messaging, a message request pending. I'm going to click on that. And it says that ECNY Corp sent me a message. Yeah. So now I can read that. And it's saying image is concealed to protect you from unwanted contact, uh, tap to reveal photo. I did that. And now that message that I just sent through a direct message is now on my phone and I'm able to view that in my other account. So now if I have that now in my phone, 
I can then tag um, followers. So I don't believe that there is a way to tag all of your followers anymore. You used to be able to, um, and last time I tried, it did not allow me. Um, so, but you can tag specific people. So if I wanted to now um, post that, and so this is on here, and say I want to comment on this, I can tag at Maria. Oh. Emma Sockley is Fry. And now um, that is going to post to her personal. And then she'll be able to see the flyer that I had posted. As long as you put the at sign. So, and that is how you're going to tag people is using the at sign. So. Um, I don't have any friends on here. So let me see, who are my followers? Um, okay, so now when you use the at sign, you can see, I'm just gonna try to pull up another post. None of these posts have at signs, so I'm just going to go to any post. Um, this is a long post that had these. That was not the best example. I'm just trying to find something. So this one has hashtags. If you agree with the, the quote, then you can put a heart according to this. Um, and then you can see all of the different hashtags that they have there. Um, it doesn't look like a lot of people have ats here, but this person put in the comment, they put an at sign. Earn with Mason, turn that into whatever. I mean, that's a sales pitch, but you can see how you would be able to tag someone else um, or your own business to get people to come and pay attention to you. I wouldn't say doing that on something like this, that's a little bit of a, a spammy move, but to tag to an article or to something that you think would be very valuable to other people um, is helpful. Uh, Another thing that you can do with um, finding and following companies is you can learn about your company culture. By following the companies on social media, it's a great way to learn about them and how they treat their employees. Um, if you're looking at the Instagram feed of any company that you're interested in, you can tell about their values, work environment, fun events that they do with their employees, and a whole lot more. Um, you can look at the comments and see how that company engages with its following as well. Um, if they seem to be really engaging with other people, then that's a good sign um, that they are a place to work for. And then you don't want to forget to interact and network with the companies. Beyond simply just following them on Instagram, you want to interact with their posts and comments. You can tag, you can like, depending on what it is that they're doing. If their employees are commenting on photos, you can interact with their comments of the employees, obviously. And then you wanna make sure that your comments are on topic and add value to the conversation and be selective about when you choose to chime in. Um, so for instance, you don't wanna spam people with ads, but you do want to make yourself very valid in the industry if you are looking for the job search. Um, or if it's just a company that you like. We had a boot camper a while ago who really loved Kind as a company, like Kind Bars. Um, and she followed them and she interacted with them. 
on a regular basis, pretty much daily, just trying to see, you know, how she could get an interview at the company. But even though when she finally did get an interview, she didn't get the job, she didn't stop interacting because she loved the company and the culture so much that to this day, she still regularly comments on some of their posts on Instagram. So you can build a relationship with something that you follow, whether it's, you know, the owners, whether it's just the social media person, whatever it is, it's nice to be able to give your perspective and your opinion away. So are there any questions right now? I can um, do some more, create some more posts. I can go back in and do an Instagram story if anybody wants to see that on Canva, because that's a good way um, to guide you. I have a million things open. Are there any questions? You can either speak them or um, type them in the chat. But otherwise, I'm going to go back to um, an Instagram story and kind of show you how those would work. So as far as far as an Instagram story go, oh, okay. So so I just got a message. Um, if you follow and the companies that you want to work for follow you back or you tag them, they will they can see things that um, that you would like them to see. If they're not following you back, they're not going to see it. But if you tag them, they will. They can see the things that you like on their activity. So if they make a post and you like it, or you comment on their post, that will build a relationship with them. Um, and the interaction and the time and effort that you put in to developing a relationship can give you a step ahead of another potential candidate that is also interviewing at that company. I guess they definitely want to see activity. They want to see, um, you know, your passion for working with them as well. So this particular um, template here, it's just a simple story. And you can see when we scroll down that this is multiple pages. It all has a very similar theme. Um, I guess this is about relaxing, stretching, cuddling. But you don't have to have it say that. You can change it up to whatever makes sense for you. But it is five pages. So you can put your own content on any of this. You can change your pictures out if you wanted to put in something. Um, so we had somebody that um, does permanent makeup in here. So we could change oh. it instead of saying, take a, a moment to breathe, we could change this to say um, something like, Oh, be beautiful. Okay. Oops. So be beautiful for you all the time. So then if we have um, a picture of, I'm going to go over here to photos and we can search for a photo. And we can say, The makeup. Okay. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So you can search this. This happens to be um, like a, uh, the ones that say pro here in Canva. That means that you have to pay for them. Um, um, we don't really want to tell you to do that. Some of them are free. It's hard to search for that. Um, however, there is another website that we often use. Um, it is called Pix a Bay, which is then I will go there in a second. I'm just trying to see if there is a, a free one here that mm. but if you have your own photos of someone that you've done 
or you know stock photos that you use from your own collection you could just upload them and it's very easy but i'm going to go to pixabay for a second it's p-i-x-a-b-a-y i'll put that in the chat box and that is for um these are going to be free images and royalty free stock okay so uh, okay these are going to be paid ones so let's see um fix so okay, let's go with that. um It doesn't look like there are any free images of that. Oh, okay. In here, um, let's see. Pretty let's just cool. see. Um. Oh, that one. Which one? This one or? Like this kind, this kind. Okay. I don't know which one. Okay. That's a crazy eye. Um, I'm just trying to find something that might make sense. Well, that was creepy. No, ugly, 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 ugly. Okay. That one is pretty. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not good at searching for this. You know what exactly I would be looking at. But for instance, if we decided to take this one, you can do a free download of it. It's gonna be a JPEG from this particular site. Um, you can sign up for free or not. You won't have to do the CAPTCHA if you signed up. Oh, okay, sign up. Okay. Now I can download this and then I can go into my Canva. Okay, so this is, and now I wanna upload that picture. So I just go to where it says uploads and now I'm gonna upload an image or a video. I'm just gonna drop it here, drag it from where my downloads were. And I can do that or I can go to device and go to whatever folder. Mm. Oh, okay. The bar completely um, fills. Then you can drag it there. And since that was a weird angle, you can change it where you want it. And now you have that's the first one of your story. So then you can go to the next one and you can say maybe something like permanent makeup with a personal touch. Oh, personal touch. Mm -hmm. You can change that. So, and it has a little graphic and you can put in um, something else. We could go back to our photos. We can put in makeup. We can drag that right there. Obviously that's not the, the picture that we would really want, but I just wanted to do something kind of quickly. So like that's the second part of your source. That's the first part. That's the second part. The third is, um, you could just say, relax and take a beauty break. Mm -hmm. And then down here, you could um, have a picture of somebody um, going out. Mm-hmm. 
and whatever it is. Always ready to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, so you could just have your whatever messaging that you would want to do, and you would have all five of them um, here. And then when you go to, um, you would go to download, and you would do it as a video, or you could do it as like standard print and it would um, print multiples of them. Or you can do it as a GIF with no sound. It would just be a short clip. This could be a video. You could do it just as a picture and it would download um, like five different slides for you. You could do it as a standard multi-page document for a PDF if you were going to post it somewhere that takes multi-page documents. Um, but Canva makes it pretty easy for that. So, um, Let's just try to find um, something that we can use. Go to my doll. Where, like a fancy picture. Photos, upload. And then the last one could be, uh, like you could add another one on here, a new page with something with just your contact information, potentially. So whatever you would think is good, but we could download this, all five pages, download. Oh, download, prepare your design, people who are crazy. People who are crazy enough to think they can change the world. So obviously, because we can't post from where we just were um, within the, because uh, you can't post from the web, we'd have to do it from a phone. I would have to go in and download from Canva into my phone, and then I would be able to post that wherever I want. People who are crazy. I'm into Instagram, so you can tag people that are following you. You can tag companies that you like to work with that maybe you get your products from so they can see your work, things like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. um, I've got a, a private chat message, so I'm just going to read through that and make sure I can answer the question. It's the way that comes. Um, somebody's asking about um, if they they want to get uh, connected to like a journalism passion, if they like um, politics or political conventions, what are some things that they can tag? Well, you can tag the political figures, you can write the at sign, you can follow them and hashtag them or whatever the, um, you know, issue is that you are passionate about. Um, if you're doing it on a business Page, I would say you want to try to stay away from being too political in any one direction. If you're just talking about like vote period, that's a very different message than um, maybe polarizing someone who might be of a different opinion from you. You don't want to alienate yourself, um, at least for the job search purposes. Um, we try to stay away from religion and politics on social media when we're um, business networking. But on your personal page, feel free to do whatever you would like when it comes to that. Um, so, artsy, artistic side to showing graphics of liking journalism or speech. Um, I think it's okay to like find images of a person giving a speech or a group of people giving a speech maybe with their faces blurred out or, um, you know, like you can just have like a hashtag politics and then write what your opinion of politics are, whether that is, you know, something as simple as go vote or know the facts, something like that. Um, that will help you get in front of people that are, respectful of um, 
being educated on, on certain topics as opposed to choosing a side on a topic. Um, if you really just enjoy um, like politics and that kind of thing and political conventions in general, I would say maybe start following, um, there are, are two uh, like daily emails that I think are pretty great for not really being, choosing one side over the other. The first one is called The Skim. And the second is called The Flip Side. Um, and if you find them on social media and Instagram, uh, it might be a good idea to follow them and then um, engage with them however you see fit. So we can try to do the skin. Uh, that might not be it. I'm not sure if this is the right one. I think it's the other one that I was looking at. So that's the skim. They have a quote of the day. Um, a lot of times they talk about what's going on in the world. You could certainly follow them. And then the other one is the flip side. Um, I'm not sure. That might be it, it there. This looks right to me. Um, five minute daily newsletter with thoughtful perspectives from left, right, and in between. So those are interesting ones to um, look at and engage because it's not necessarily um, having you lean one way or the other. Um, so I think these would be a good place to start off from a journalistic view because you can look at the articles that they did and they give one, um, like the flip side will give one left, one right, and one somewhere in the middle. So you can, you know, make a commentary on all of the different things that they're talking about. Um, and then the skim also just um, kind of gives you a little bit of a, just the facts as opposed to an opinion. Obviously nothing is ever going to be completely unbiased, but for the most part, both of these um, resources do a fairly good job at just, you know, um, telling, informing people as opposed to persuading people. Um, okay, I have another comment that says, can I possibly replace the actual facial features of the person with a cartoon that I pull up? Like if I want it to be humoristic, can I replace Trump's face with a picture of a cartoon from the 80s, uh, like a, a common cartoon character of that time? Um, I don't, so I think, doing that kind of puts you in a light that might be perceived as alienating or negative. Um, if you think about like Stephen Colbert, he is often kind of making fun of Trump and doing like the cartoon thing. And I think that it, it does get offensive to some people. I would maybe stay away from that unless it's a very um, generic, Person, I wouldn't try to do a main figurehead and replace it out um, for social media. If you're trying to get into that field, um, if you're trying to work for, you know, one of the news outlets on one side or the other, you can, you know, maybe show a political cartoon like that during the interview process if that's something that they would be interested in. But I don't know that I would necessarily put that on social media because it could rub some people the wrong way. And during the job search, that's not ideal. Um, only if I want to be in comedy or working. Yes, I am old enough to know what SNL is. Um, if you want to work for Saturday Night Live, then I would maybe do that and send it to them in a, uh, a DM, which is like a direct message, the little paper airplane in your Instagram. Um, but you have to be aware that people can share from that, um, from direct messages and like block that setting. 
Um, you, you can go through the settings when you're doing your profile. They're all in the left-hand column in case you missed it when you came in a little bit late. Um, oh, so um, the paper airplanes is just the, the direct message. So it's, it's here. It just looks like an arrow. But to me, I call it a paper airplane because that's what I was told it is. So um, on here... Um, you can see it there. I don't, I have to go into a different account um, because that one has a notification over it. So I'm just going to switch my account. Um, okay, that's fine. I don't, um, so go to our followers, I can do this. Um, I'm not sure why I don't have a direct message feature here. Oh, so when you click on a post, so this was a post that I sent and I tagged ECNY. Um, and the founder, Maria Fry, was able to see it and she replied. She just sent it back out. So now I can now direct message this to someone else. It does look like a paper airplane. So this is right from the comments. I can click on that. I can share it to Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, share via email, copy a link, or cancel. But that was a direct message initially. And what it looks like in Instagram, I'll try to get that up on the camera. So at the top of my Instagram page, oops, um, it's a little hard to see. Okay, so this is like the home page. I don't have a bunch of followers, so their stories are not listed across the top right now because this was a brand new, I'd basically see. The person that I'm following is ECNY, so some of their posts are there. Um, and then posts of just people that come inherently in every account. But if you want a direct message, which is what I call a paper airplane, it's up here, it's that little arrow. You can click that. And it's a little hard to see if you're following along on your phone. You can do it. You can see that there are messages and you can send it to other people that says to um, connect your contacts, search for friends, you can search for other people, you can go to your camera, you can take a picture of our Zoom. It's not the most flattering picture, but I could then just go to send that to someone, which is, um, I took a picture of just the screen and the Zoom and then down here, which is a little hard to see, that button right there, it's a little um, white oval. It says send to, and now it gives me an option of who I can send it to. So I can send it to my story. I can send it to my close friends. I can send it to Instagram. I can send it to the person that's following me and I'm following. So that would be a way to do it. That's the paper airplanes to send a direct message from there.